Welcome back to wagertalk.com. This is the question and answer video, and we've got a bunch of questions this week. Let's get right into it. Uh, Cheetah, first one uh, comes from David B., and he saw one of your videos that you've been doing, uh, the Cheetah Cast uh -huh. videos, and uh, Hawaii Cal, on the video, you mentioned that Hawaii's program may be going under and you expect them to come out fired up and he was kind of questioning that thinking he was thinking possibly the other way with the program might be headed uh, for an end sure i this isn't like any inside information or anything it's it was public uh, early last year and i think the ad even came out and said you know this the football program is not bringing in any revenue and so we might have to end it uh, and so my i, I know obviously the, the players there the, the coaches there don't want the program to end the fans probably don't um, but ultimately, it's a business decision, so it is a possibility. I hope it doesn't happen. Uh, and I just think this year they have a new coach coming in, uh, Nick Rolovich, I believe is his name, from Nevada. Uh, and so kind of a fresh face there, a new um, kind of more up-tempo offense that runs some spread but, but rushes the ball a lot. Um, and then this kind of behind their, their, their cloud over their heads, I guess I should say, with potentially you know the program going under. I just think that's that's encouraging more so than the players feeling like I, I think they're out to prove something more so than kind of sitting back and, and being worried that their program could end. Um, so that that's just my personal take. I, I guess you could argue the other side. I was trying to kind of argue it in my head on the way here because I, I saw the question come in. And I don't know. I don't know. For me, if 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 someone is saying like you guys stink, <laughs> you're not making us any money. Like I want to prove them wrong. I want to do my best to to do that. I don't I don't want to you know. You, You'd let that fuel me being worse. I, so I guess the sports psychology take for me is that more often than not, I think for, for players, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a positive thing than negative. How about the cliche, if I'm going to go out, I'm not going to go out without a fight. Well, these, sure. are, these yeah. are football players. Yeah. I mean, they're, it's, they're, they're not playing chess or whatever. These guys are physical football players, and if you've seen Hawaii, they've got a lot of big Samoans on that team. I mean, they've got some big guys on that team. They're not going to let anybody sit back. Um, and in that complete, that game there uh, with California, that's the team that loses the number one draft pick. I'm yeah. not going to be betting on California in the first game of the season. I don't know if it'll be on Hawaii, but that was kind of what we talked about in the video too. Is there some value in Hawaii? I think in this first matchup. All right. Next question we got was from Elijah, Elijah Luke, and he wants to know which offense has a better chance to succeed: an offense that's bringing back nine or ten starters, but a new quarterback, or four or five starters but you have a veteran quarterback that was a, it was a good question I, I think it's very dependent on on who the quarterback is obviously um, generally I think I would rather have like nine or ten starters and then the quarterback be random you know if the quarterback's Deshaun Watson at you know, Clemson then I'd rather have him with just five other guys like it just it's dependent there's but there's only a few elite quarterbacks where having like an entire offensive line returning and a couple key skill position guys, you know, makes up the difference. And so for me, more often, I definitely think that having nine or ten back with a new quarterback, the offense will sustain, you know, what they did the year before, more so than an average or above average quarterback even with, like, just four or five guys coming back. I don't think you can answer that question definitively. Yeah. Uh, I would rather have Alabama having nine uh, players coming back on the offense if any quarterback they've had in the last 20 years. Marco could be under center. <laughs> yeah, Marco could be under center. Well, well, I don't know if we want to go that far. But I think, too, you got to look at the system, and we've talked about it. We've seen, like, you know, Baylor. We've seen, you know, they had no drop-off after RG3 left. You know, he was a Heisman winner, and this is a team that just – it's the system it's not just the quarterback so you got to look at that kind of stuff that's too. why Tulsa scored a bunch of points last year the Baylor offensive coordinator is now the head coach yeah. there and BYU, so definitely systematic BYU for years did that and they would they yeah. would waste a first round draft pick on a BYU quarterback <laughs> another than McMahon yeah. who was a leader but he wasn't a great quarterback absolutely all right great question um, moving on um, MP Moore asked this given the late game disasters uh, last year with Tennessee how confident can you be with this team in early uh, early season, uh, you know they're going to be laying some big points, and we talked about Tennessee pretty much uh, in an earlier video. But if one yeah. sentence uh, answer on that one, we, go check out the SEC preview we did. We talked about Tennessee. You brought up some of the beats last year. They cost you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. In general, I don't think you can really expect one way or the other going into a game. You just kind of need to trust what your your numbers are, the formula formula you're using to handicap a game. Um, but generally, I'd like to believe in teams that have had a year and that experience 
whether it's losing or just you know trials, whatever it might be. You know, you, you regroup, you learn from it, and you use that to better your team or yourself. If you don't learn so, from your mistakes, uh, that's... I hope they do, <laughs> and I think they will t- to some degree. In uh, last question for this week, uh, Matt Poza asked, how can tough travel conditions affect totals in football? Now, I know this is something that we talk about travel a lot, especially in the NBA. You know, you get to travel situations. Uh-huh. But in the NFL, because, you know, it is, you know, you got a week in between games. Do you guys look at that uh, affecting the totals? Yeah, I'm curious if Brian has anything. My, my first thought is I don't have any, like, historic data to back anything up there that's definitive. Um, but usually when you're looking at travel stuff, you're looking for some sort of situational edge on one of the teams. And most people, when they're handicapping that, they're looking at a side. And I think that's why I asked the question. Normally you're like, oh, this team might be in a flat spot, so I'm betting the other team mm-hmm. as far as the side goes. For a total, um, you know, I think, I think there's a lot that still is dependent on it. But where I would look is and look at team totals if you have access to that, that bet and, and, and maybe are underutilized um, you know, for people that are just getting started if you bet – you know, if you like a team to be super flat and you can bet they're under 31 and a half team total points, but you're not, you know, you're not wanting to bet under 60 because yeah. if they're flat and they don't score enough and the other team scores 50 something, like yeah. you lose your, your under. I mean, you've got to look at that extra step and team totals, I think, is a spot where you could really utilize some of those situational edges or traveling that could affect a team um, to your advantage. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Uh, good points. When you're traveling, Every team has a certain thing they like to do all the time. And uh, if you could just go back and maybe isolate when they cross two time zones or play on the East Coast, play on the West Coast, and just go back over the last few years under that coaching staff and see what happens and see if it's the offense or the defense that struggles, that may be a better way to go about it. And I think look at the team, if you're trying to isolate where some of these spots are, look at the conferences that aren't geographic friendly anymore. Like, you know, Penn State is the only team over here of the Big Ten, you know, in you know playing way over in Pennsylvania, West Virginia having to travel where all the teams that they do for their road games, and vice versa when the teams are coming to them. Those are the type of spots that I would look at and try to find and see if there is a pattern in there. But those are the spots that I would look at. All right, hey guys, great questions this week. We love you sending us the questions each and every week. Keep doing it. We love doing the videos and asking them. Uh, just hit us up on Twitter each week and. And we'll get them answered for you. And, of course, if you have something during the week, you can ask any one of us directly on Twitter, and we'll try to answer it for you the best we can in 140 characters or less. Hey, and don't forget, guys, weekend all access, $69. Pick your favorite capper. Get all of his plays Thursday through Monday each and every week, just $69. That includes when we have our big 5 or 6% plays as well. We don't hold those back on the weekend all access. Check it out wagertalk.com. We'll be back with more here at Wager Talk.